Well, I am 25 years old from BC, Canada. I am an artist and a vlogger and I run a YouTube channel where I review various TV shows and movies. And I'm pretty much an all-around fangirl for a various number of things. I am a pretty new collector. I have been collecting for about 10 months now, just under a year. My collection started with my interest in the new My Little Pony show, Friendship is Magic. As a fangirl, I wanted to collect some of the toys from the show, so I started up a collection of G4 My Little Pony toys. This collection quickly expanded, however, from just the characters on the show to a wider variety of pony toys, until I eventually found myself drooling over dolls. Ponies started my collecting habit, but dolls cemented it. My first doll to kick me off was a la -dee da after which I quickly started also collecting Monster Highs and Kerns, and I just kind of spiraled out from there. The biggest feature in my collection now are Ever After Highs and Equestria Girls. I also continue to collect Monster High, some Disney Store stuff, Kern, and even Funko Pop figures. I don't really have a focus on a specific brand so much though, as much as I have a focus on just dolls that I personally find really aesthetically pretty to look at. And of course characters that I know and love from my favorite TV shows and movies. As far as a specific brand, my biggest love right now is Ever After High, and what drew me to Ever After High is also what draws me to a lot of my other doll purchases. I love the long and fanciful hairstyles, the feminine, girly looks, and most importantly, the medieval fantasy outfits that look like they came straight out of a fairy tale. One day I'd also love to collect Asian ball-jointed dolls, if only they weren't quite so expensive, which is another great example. I love Lolita fashion and anything just ludicrously cute and girly. I don't know anyone else who collects dolls. However, a lot of my friends do collect figures, and I know a few fellow bronies who are also collecting the My Little Pony figures and memorabilia. They view me as a bit of an oddity for having branched out into dolls, but they don't see it as all that strange. Junko Mizuno, one of my favorite manga artists of all time, designed a G3 My Little Pony in 2008, and I would absolutely love to have that one in my collection someday. As far as dolls go though, as unlikely as my ever obtaining one is, I would love to someday own one of the now banned and discontinued Django Unchained dolls. I'd love any of them, but if I could pick, mostly I would love Broomhilda. As I mentioned earlier as well, someday I would love to own an Asian BJD. I think my favorite doll at the moment is Ever After High's Raven Queen. She's incredibly beautiful. I think it's the gothic elegance about her that makes me love her so much. She doesn't look like a really typical doll, which tend to be blonde and with a more mainstream ideal of beauty. She's dark and mysterious, and I love that about her. My other big favorite is my Orchids Girl Kern doll. I love Kerns for the anime aesthetic. They remind me of Studio Ghibli films. She is so simple, and yet so perfect in her simplicity. I am an out-of-box collector for the most part. I don't really see the point of keeping a whole bunch of items in boxes when the entire reason that I want them is because I really like how they look. I just find they look so much nicer out-of-box, on display, decorating my shelves. I will make an exception, however, if I were ever to obtain any very rare, expensive, or valuable collector's items. For instance, I would certainly never unbox a Django Unchained doll. The best moment that I have found in collecting is the experience of buying a new toy or doll. Finding it at the store, getting it home, ripping it out of the package, and then taking a whole bunch of pictures of it. This is the single biggest thrill in collecting for me. I do enjoy looking at dolls that I want to get in the future online, and I also enjoy having them on my shelves to turn to and admire from time to time. But by and far, the most fun is had when you first break a new item out of the package. 
The most special doll in my collection is my oldest toy. I was given D as a baby and have had him my entire life. I don't really have any interest in collecting baby dolls, but D has a lot of sentimental value. He is a Unita doll, although he has had his body remade at least once during my life. When I started this whole doll collecting thing, he was in pretty rough shape as I had scribbled all over his face with markers as a kid. I got him cleaned up, bought him some new clothes, and now he looks a lot more presentable. The other doll in my collection that doesn't necessarily fit is an older porcelain doll that I got from my grandmother. She's not worth anything, I checked, but she was left to me in my grandmother's will after she passed away. She had a small collection of porcelain dolls and left each one to one of her granddaughters. There's no point in hiding it. People that might care, like, I don't know, casual acquaintances or co-workers, probably will never be seeing your home. And those who will be seeing your home, friends and family, probably won't care. Even so, if you are about to invite someone into your home who you worry won't react very favorably to seeing your collection for the first time, a gentle warning ahead of time might be nice. But if somebody really cares all that much about what your hobbies are or laughs at you for it, I would question whether you really need that person in your life or not. Hmm, I have just started, but here are the general rules that I've been using going into it. Number one, pace yourself. When I started, I instantly wanted absolutely anything and everything that I saw. It was very hard to curb the impulse to just buy everything in sight right away. Instead, Really let yourself get to know and enjoy a new doll before you buy another one. That way, not only will you avoid going broke, you'll appreciate each one a lot more. Number two, pick a focus or a theme. As an example, when I started in on a collection of Funko Pop figures, I knew that I would be doomed to become lost down a rabbit hole if I didn't pick a theme because there are so many awesome pop figures. So I decided that my pop collection would only include princess characters. This can apply to any collection. Don't feel obligated to buy absolutely everything in a line. Stick to the ones you really want. And number three, budget. I've quickly learned that this can easily become a very expensive hobby. Shoot for sales. Make careful purchase decisions. Basically, the gist of all three of these is don't rush it. Don't feel like you need it all now. Start slow and only buy dolls that you know you'll really enjoy looking at months from now. I'd like to be, but I only have so much time. I like the idea of customizing, but I also like the idea of a specific collector's item. I think it largely depends on the doll, too. A BJD, for instance, is specifically designed to be made your own, so I, I think I would customize something like that. I don't think it'll die out, but I don't think it'll be the same as it used to be. There will always be collectors around for everything. There will always be those who want to track down rare and valuable items, and there will always be those who want the latest characters from Disney and Mattel. But I don't think that modern dolls will ever age into the same kind of value as antique dolls did. With mass production as huge as it is now, I think that people will find that modern doll collections will mostly never be worth anything. Because of this, new doll collectors really shouldn't get into it for the idea that someday my collection will be valuable. Only get into it if you really love looking at these dolls all the time. You can find me on WordPress, YouTube, Twitter, and Facebook. Thanks for having me!